come from a culture and actually a society that teaches girls to speak soft. You can't shout, you can't scream, you need to act like a lady. Whereas now we live in times where we're needing to use our voices, you know. And I guess when we're teaching girls to take up space, it's giving them permission actually to, to be loud. The club was initiated in 2012. I saw how there was a lack actually of spaces where young women could come together and learn about their bodies and changes, but also like just general social issues that were affecting them on a daily basis. And so I took it upon me to initiate that space. The girls group that I was part of with Tolly, it was a free space, it was a space where I can just be myself. I can just cry it all out and dance it all out or laugh it all out. It equipped me with information and tools and skills on how to be myself. How do I form my identity as Siki? In the Young Women's Club, I noticed that it's okay to be that rose that grows out of the rock. It's okay to be crazy in your beautiful way as long as you are authentic to yourself. Being a young girl living in a community where you feel unsafe 24-7, it's so, so draining. These girls have to wear a mask to cope. I feel like for me, that is when we lose our young people. It's very hard to dream when you are in survival. And I feel like where I come from, you're surviving all the time. As a black community, we don't really value personal development. And for me, it's such a bizarre thing, because if you don't build the character of a child, how can they stand strong and tall and be resilient if they don't know how to be with themselves? Growing up in a black family, like black society, we don't share most things with our parents. So having that girls club actually created um, the space where we can actually share about anything and we can talk about anything without anyone judging us. It's rare to find role models in my township. Older people or people who have made it in life, they decide to move out of Kailicha. So we don't have people who can actually like sit down with a young girl and tell them about life and tell them the good things about life. So my role models in this work were definitely Melissa Michaels and Hannah Lewenthal. It was very obvious for me to connect Ollie with Melissa after I learned that she was working with young people and it just made so much sense for me that she would gain resources and tools um, in Melissa's work. Melissa has been a mentor for me for many years, particularly with regard to my work with young women. When I approached Melissa and said to her, like, I really want to start the girls' group in South Africa, she was really very supportive, but not just supportive, she was like, I'm going to work beside you and I and help to make this happen. Now I see it as three generations, starting with Melissa moving to myself and then on to Tolly, and I think that's how we need to keep thinking. How can we link the young people in our lives to the elder people who have wisdom and knowledge that we might not have? Oli linked us with Mama Melissa. So that's when we knew about Golden Bridge and then we saw her in the US and it was actually our first time flying and it was actually our first time even going out of the country. At this Golden Bridge Rite of Passage Youth Camp, what was so surprising for me is to know that all around the world, young people face almost similar challenges. Golden Bridge for me has meant that I have my girls all over the world and I know that I have family that has my back. 
it's just beautiful to see this trend of very powerful, resilient women creating these spaces for young girls to develop, to be resilient and to take up space. And so there were three beautiful girls, Siki, Sosa and Mashe, that said, we want to do this, you know, because we saw what it has done for us and we want to take it back to our schools, we want to take it back to our homes, to our communities. And now from 12 girls, we now have like 60 girls in Kylie Chen, Lavender Hill, run actually by the third generation of this work. Currently, I have so many brave young girls in my club that are not afraid to stick out, are not afraid to show who they really are. And that shows me that whatever that I was doing back then is happening right now with those girls. Involving the movement into our work, it gave my body a room to go through the emotions that I needed to let go, to process. It was another way of expressing myself without having to say a word. That's what I experienced that even though I can talk, but I feel like after moving, a lot has been done. I've seen in my work that dance gives young women a language that goes beyond the spoken word. Their bodies have experienced something that then have a gateway or a platform to speak out, sometimes scream out. So some of the tools I bring to these girls are tools um, of communication, because communication plays a big role in our, in our society. And also setting boundaries so that they know when something is over the limit for them. You can draw a line on where people can touch your body. You can draw a line on which spaces you want to be part of. And you can draw a line on which decisions you want to make for yourself without anyone influencing you. Growing up in a township, kids don't learn art in school. So that is a very foreign subject to them. And I was really struck about how Melissa was using their creativity, you know, like as a tool to heal. So when we teach girls about their own menstruation cycle, often we'll hear girls saying, I can't keep track of my period. And so there's this beautiful bracelet that you can do that tracks your whole cycle. And so it's just a beautiful way of them like honoring their own cycle. You'll be surprised how many girls miss school because they don't have access, you know, to sanitary wear. And so, so one of my biggest dream is for our girls club to design this cloth pad that would be used by teenagers all around the globe. For us to be able to push the girls club this far, I think it actually takes a commitment to your vision. And my vision is to see young girls prospering in life, being empowered and knowing who they are in this community and taking up a space. In the communities that we grow up in, it's easy to lose your way. But if we have these spaces, we have strong, resilient women who are growing up, wanting to make more impact in the world. The first thing that comes into mind when you're teaching young girls to take up space is to trust in their inner voice, but also the power that lies within them, and that they don't need permission to enter spaces dominated by a male, and that they have that power actually to lead and be in the forefront. I feel like there's a lot of power in understanding that we can work with one young woman and once that young woman has tools and resources, she's going to pass it on to the women around her. There's an inevitable ripple effect that starts. Um, it gives me hope.